Hello, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Louise. Um, I'm a plant hobbyist. I live in Manchester in the UK. Um, today we've got a plant unboxing. So it's Saturday the 5th, I think, of December. Um, I had a birthday this week. Um, this uh, box arrived this morning. It's a gift from my son who ordered it, gosh, a while ago. Um, it didn't arrive in time for the day of my birthday, but it's come now. I do know what it is. Um, it's been on my wish list for a while. So I've got a little wish list of plants that I want, and this is one of them. So I get, I've partially unboxed it, um, just check the top to see if everything's okay. And I will tip it on its side because I want to slide the plant out of the box rather than sort of pulling it out the top. I don't want to damage any uh, leaves on the plant. So I get to just carefully putting it on its side. It's a quite a big box, as you can see. And I will gently slide the plant out. Get the box, just drop the box down there. Okay, oops, knocking over the stand. <laughs> and here we are, this is what we've got. It's quite a big plant. This is a Thestrum nocturnum, also known as Hasnahela in Bangladesh, also known as Ratkirani. Um, which basically translates as a well, queen of the night or night blooming jasmine. So I've had this plant on my wish list for a while. The very first time I got one of these was in 1987 um, in Bangladesh and I brought back quite a few plants at that time. It was my husband's idea actually. He wanted a collection of uh, flowering scented plants from Bangladesh just reminded him of home and those days there were no online nurseries um, there were no sort of um, places on the internet you could order these from so brought one of these back it was only little and it grew really quickly and it flowered I knew nothing about this plant at that stage um, other than what my husband told me. So I resorted to the old fashioned way of researching and got myself a book. I'll probably read back to front there, but it's, this is the, the RHS Encyclopedia of House Plants by Kenneth A. Beckett. And it's a bit tattered, dogged. That's the, the, the jacket, it's a bit ripped, but it's a well-used book. Lots of information in here about tropical plants, non-tropical, how to care for them, and giving both the botanical name and the common name as well. That way I was able to research what the name of this plant was, and what kind of growing conditions it required. Um, also many trips to the library as well, you know, to, to look up um, other tropical plants that I had. Uh, it doesn't cover every single plant in here, but it's quite a big um, book. It's got lots and lots of, you know, information in it. So the old fashioned method of research using books. I do like getting books as well, um, particularly plant related. Last year I got, um, I think it was last year, I got this book. Uh, Q, The Gardener's Companion to Medicinal Plants. I got this I think for Christmas and lovely um, illustrations in here. I love plant illustrations and the information on the plant. Um, what its medicinal qualities are and how to grow them 
how to grow medicinal plants so very lovely book there if you're into plant books this is a lovely one to get i also got the this book the healing power of plants and just tells you about different types of plants how they benefit you having them in the same living environment um, lots of information in here and nice pictures as well plants to improve well-being lovely book so books out of the way I also got some seed mail today as well so good timing and these seeds were from my youngest she's a student at university so I didn't want her wasting too much of her money she's not she does work but you know, she's a student so I said get me some seeds and I gave her a list I said you can choose a couple off there and um, that's what she's done so these are the seeds and they're not your common garden variety seeds we'll get to the first one Lusanga secripioides tiny little seeds there and Lusanga is native to tropical Africa what it says on the paperwork they sent it's a quick growing tree commonly known as the corkwood or umbrella tree so i'll put a picture up here of what uh, lusanga secrepoides looks like and um, that'll give you an idea it's something hopefully that will look nice in my garden more more than an out more of an outdoor plant i would hope to create sort of a tropical looking area in my uh, back garden does reach up to 30 meters tall it's an evergreen with a white yellow bark um, that's if it grows you know um, to great heights and widths here um, it is frost tender so I probably have to bring it indoors um, it says it should be kept above 10 degrees so in the wild the seeds pass through the digestive tracts of animals as they eat the fruits which may be a factor in how they germinate you can replicate this by gently scarifying the seeds by nicking the surface of the, of the seed coat or gently sandpapering the coat so i think i'll just do the sandpaper method and then um, once you've done that pop it into well draining somewhat coarsely textured soil mixture such as sand or gravel base um, I think I'll use vermiculite as I found that's very good at um, helping retain the moisture as also retaining the heat it says germination should occur after around 14 days so I'll be putting those in the propagator with the LED light above it so that's the misanga secropoides uh, the next one is these seeds here and this is Cephalopenia fulcarima also known as dwarf poinciana um, which is a member of the Delonyx regia family <coughs> excuse me have a little drink of my tea I have grown Delonyx regia before um, and that the Delonyx Regia was called Krishna Chura in Bangladesh. Um, very feathery, feathery like leaves. It's a tree, very similar to the tamarind. And these are the dwarf version. So I'm not, it doesn't really give a lot of information on here about the um, Poinciana. It's also known as Poinciana Gilesi. So it's a, it is a member of the uh, Poinciana family. It just gives information about soaking the seeds 24 hours, um, put, putting them in compost, etc. Doesn't really give you any information. So I'll put a picture up here of what 
the Cephalobenia pulcherima or Poinciana glisi seeds. Actually, the other name for these is Radachura. So Radachura is a, another beautiful flowering plant in Bangladesh. Lovely bright red flowers, very feathery um, type leaves. So hopefully I can get these germinated and I'll be able to show you um, what the uh, leaves look like and if I'm lucky at some stage if I can get these to survive get some flowers off them so that's the Cephalopenia pulcherima Poitiana glisi or Rada Chura seeds and the last one is a Broodmansia these are Broodmansia seeds and I think this is a red uh, variety so this is Brugmansia sangui sanguini or sanguini, uh, native to South America, has very large leaves, uh, have got a Brugmansia outside, still there, still growing. It's not succumbed to the frost that we had the other day. Um, produces large trumpet-like flowers and the one I've got outside I think is a yellow, yellow variety. And these are red so I'll put a picture up of what these look like as well and hopefully get these to germinate I'll pop them all in the propagator the one that um, I did the henna seeds in the henna seedlings are still in there and um, coming along well I've got about 40 henna seeds seedling plants in there now they're only tiny very slow growing but um, more, more for my collection. So that's what I have to show you today. So thank you all for watching. If anybody else is growing any of these um, seeds that I've mentioned, they've got the plants of these, please put your comments below on how you found these plants to be. And also if anybody else is growing the um, Hasnaherna, night blooming jasmine radkarani or sustrum nocturnum if you're growing this plant and you've got any tips on how to keep it healthy what kind of soil you've got it in what growing conditions have you got it near a window or in a grow tent let me know thank you all for watching please like and subscribe take care everyone bye bye